Yes, yes, yes. Once again, it's time for the WNBA playoffs. This time we're discussing the first round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. First up, the Indiana Fever versus the Chicago Sky. Now, the Chicago Sky has had quite a season. I wasn't sure how they'd fare with the Sylvia Fowles gone, but give credit to Jessica Breeland. She's played better than expected. Not a center, of course, but she's more than held her own in Sylvia Fowles' absence. She could shoot the 15-footer. She could also get you from inside. An amazing asset for the Chicago Sky. Clarissa Del Santos had to get her bearings together since coming from Brazil, uh, but she's she's been more aggressive. She's made better decisions, and her together with Erica de Souza, also a Brazilian, of course, as we all know, one of the premier centers of the league. All three, de Souza, dos Santos, and Breland, are going to be vital in this series against the likes of Catch and then Kaiser and Achanwa and Larkins and Howard off the bench. It's good for them also that Tamari Young is back and healthy. That means even more rebounds and assists. And then you have Blonde Ambition, Elena Deladon, Courtney Vandersloot, and Allie Quigley off the bench. So you have the league's top scorer, the league leader in assists, and potentially the sixth woman of the league. They know each other very well. They trust each other, and for those reasons, they'll be tough to beat. But if Indiana gets physical with them, they could have a chance. Although I will say that Sloot's physicality has done a 360 in the years that she's turned pro. I remember her getting bounced around as a, as a rookie. Those days are long, long gone. She's like the Lindsay Whalen of the Eastern Conference, damn near. And that's, that's good for her because she's come a long way. Sky is a solid team, well-defined, awesome rebounding team, first in scoring and free throw percentage, and Atlanta's been healthy. Their defense is not the best, but they will still be tough to beat regardless. The only issue I have is uh, Cappy Pondexter's health. She hasn't played since August 29th due to some mystery illness for them to win it all she has to be in there no doubt about it not only as a scorer but as a leader with championship experience looking at indiana i mean props to stephanie white i mean she's been so impressive as a first year coach fever is a team the fever is a team that prospers on sheer toughness very physical always have been they're not going to score a lot of points they're not going to give up a lot of points. They have, as we all know, the best all-around player ever to play the game. I love Kaiser's tenaciousness. Breon January has been and always will be one of the best point guards in the league. And they're the best team in three-point percentage, thanks in part to players like Maggie Lucas. They've had some lulls, but they've hung in there. Shanice Johnson has been such an asset to their offense, a candidate for most improved player. Marissa Coleman could be most improved player, but she had a better first half than the second, I think. And the Rook, Achanwa. At one point, she was the top scorer among rookies until June Lloyd got more minutes and kind of took care of that. The Sky has beaten Indiana pretty much all season long. Orlando Larkins has not been the Orlando Larkins of old. She's had injuries to her knee and that has put her on the bench or kept her out of games and that'll hurt the fever because she was so phenomenal in their road to glory back in 2012. I say the sky may not only beat the fever but they'll probably sweep them. All right next up the Washington Mystics versus the New York Liberty. The Mystics listen I like them. I love Misaman and Lada. Dolson has had a better season than she had last year, which was expected. Tierra Ruffin Pratt continues to shine, continues to do damage. And then you have Taylor Hill off the bench, who has also prospered since coming back. And then you have Latoya Sanders. Yeah, I mean, she's come out of nowhere. She can rebound, she can block, she has arms that go out from here to Texas. Incredible player. They have a tough, tough defense. Second only to the Liberty in points allowed, but they don't score a lot of points. 
They're 10th in the W in putting points on the board. If it wasn't for their D, they'd probably be out the playoffs. I expected Bria Hartley to have a breakout season. An injury that she had uh, took care of that, unfortunately. Didn't see that potential flourish that was left over from last season. But the playoffs have been known to bring out the best in people, so we'll see about that. Listen, I want Mike T to win one someday. May not be the year of this year, but he's the winningest coach in W history. He's been to the finals before and he's lost. He may have to wait another year though. That's because the Liberty looked too damn good. This is the best that the Liberty has ever looked since entering the league in 1997. Big, big ups to Bill Lambert, who to me is a lock for coach of the year. At one point, I thought it was Stephanie White, but mm -mm. It's, it's, it's Bill's year as coach of the year. Uh, the chemistry has been very, very fluid. Tanisha Wright, Tina Charles, and Epiphany Prince have worked well together. There were a couple of games early on where Tina Charles just seemed to disappear for some strange reason. She was on the court but could not score to save her life. It looks like those problems have been taken care of. And then you have the rookie Kia Stokes. My gosh, she's been amazing. If you're coming into the paint, she'll go volleyball on you. I mean, it's just been a block party with Kia Stokes this year, second only to the great Brittany Griner of the Phoenix Mercury. She has that Yukon seal of approval. I expect her to give Stephanie Dolson a very hard time in the paint, along with Tina Charles. The Liberty has the stingiest defense in the league, thanks to players like Candace Wiggins and Piff and Tanisha Wright, and of course, the aforementioned Kia Stokes. And then you have Sugar Rogers, who's gone through such great pains to lose weight and get into shape. It's Beard Fruit, and uh, she's actually the third leading scorer on the team. The negatives, well, they are, they're, they're not the best free throw shooting team. We know that for sure. They're 11th in the league in that department. They lost rookie Brittany Boyd to injury, and that completely broke my heart because she was so fearless, so ferocious as a rookie. And I think we will see some great things from her in, in the years to come. She's been amazing. My prediction, I believe that the Liberty will win and sweep the Mystics. So there you have it, the first round playoff pitcher of the WNBA Eastern Conference. Peace.